Hey there, everyone. This is Dan from the Strength Coach Tutor. Today, we are going to start a small mini-series here on how I solve math-related questions on the NSCA CSCS exam without a calculator. Basically showing you guys easier ways how I solve these math-related questions by hand, and hopefully you can apply these questions into not only the exam, but also into real life to help you do math a little bit quicker in any situation where you may not have a calculator for some reason. So let's go ahead and get started here. So we're going to start off really basic in terms of how do you do some basic division um, without a calculator, right? And so a lot of times what we can see here, or we could get a question like, uh, an athlete has a caloric intake of, let's just say 2,500 kcals. They are consuming, let's just say 125 grams of protein, what percentage of their total caloric intake is from protein? This could very feasibly be a question that you actually see. This can be part of a question. You have to use this kind of knowledge and skills in order to help solve a question. And uh, so let's go ahead and see how we solve this, right? So step one, no, let me do this. Step one would be to figure out how many kcals of protein we need, right? Because they gave us it in grams. So we have to convert protein in grams to protein in kcals, right? So we have 125 grams of protein, right? It's so in order to figure out how many uh, kcals we have of protein, we have to multiply this by four, right? Because remember, protein is four kcals per gram. So times four kcals per gram, that's going to equal what? Can we figure out 125 times four on our own? Hopefully we can. If not, this is how I would break it down, right? So we have 125. In order to break that up, I would do 100 times four, and I would do 25 times four, right? Because 100 plus 25 would be that 125 that we're dealing with, right? So if we separate those, 100 times four would be, of course, 400, and 25 times four would be 100, right? If you have four quarters, that would equal a dollar or, you know, 1.00, right? So 25 times four would equal 100. Hopefully that is math that you can do. I hope so. Um, and so then your next step, you would have to add this 100 to the 400, and that would give us 500 kcals. All right, so we have 500 kcals of protein that we're consuming. Remember, our total is 2,500. Now, I actually did make this uh, a little bit easier for myself, and I am making this completely up on the fly, making it seem like, you know, I can solve these questions no matter what situation I'm presented with. Now, very easily, we could solve this in terms of dividing 500 into 2,500. That's very easy, right? That would be, what, 5 times 5 is 25. 2,500 divided by 500 would be 5, right? Or, um, I want to say, it would be 20%. Uh, it would be one-fifth right? Be one fifth. And so another way how I could show you how to do this is what I call the 10% rule. So step two is my, what I call the 10% rule. And so I use the 10% rule whenever I'm going to do any form of division. And so what I would do is that 10% rule involves me taking 10% of the total K cows consumed. In any situation, I'm always going to take 10% of the total K cows consumed. And so 10% of 2,500 would just be 250, right? So in order to take 10% of anything, I'm just taking away this last digit, right? I just take away that last digit and that's how I get 10%. And so what I can see here, right? 10% equals 250 K cows. I'm dealing with 500. I need to figure out what percentage is 500 K cows out of 25. 2,500. So what I'm now going to do is that I'm going to multiply this 250 as many times as I need to in order for it to get as close as possible to that 500 to give me that percentage, right? So let's just see here. If I did 250 times 2, that would equal, well, hey, look, that's 500. Look at that. I hit that now on the head, right? Perfect. I automatically right away got an easy shot at this, right? 250 times 2 equals 500. And now this is how I know how much, 
you know, what percentage that is, right? It's because I'm multiplying this by two, right? I know that this 250 represents 10%. If I multiply 250 times two, this number that I'm gonna get is now gonna represent 20%. Same thing if I did 250 times three, that would represent 3%. If I did 250 times seven, that number would represent 70% and so on and so forth, okay? And so that's how I use the 10% rule. Now let's try and, and see if I can make up a uh, harder question and where the number the numbers aren't as uh, nice and easy to work with. But again, the answer choice or the correct answer choice would be 20% of our total caloric intake is from protein, right? So let's go ahead and make a harder question here. So let's say an athlete is consuming 3,100 kcals. Um, let's say they are consuming 70 grams of fat. What percent of their total caloric intake is from fat? All right, so same step one here. So now we're dealing with fat. Step one, find kcals from fat. So we have 70 grams, right? So we have that 70 grams of fat times, we have to times it by its kcals per gram, which is nine, right? Fat has nine kcals per gram. So 70 times nine equals 630. If you couldn't figure that out, well, you could do seven times nine, right? Seven times nine would be 63. And then all she has to do is add the zero, right? Because we had that extra zero from 70 and we add it to the right side and that would be 630, not 63, right? You add that zero to the 63 and you get 630. So this is 630 kcals uh, from fat, right? And now, so step two, we have to figure out what percent of uh, 630 is into 3,100, right? So we're gonna have to divide in reality, we, we would divide if we had a calculator, 630 divided by 3,100, we would get a decimal, multiply it by 100, and that would give us our percentage. But we don't have a calculator, so we're gonna make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So again, I'm gonna use my 10% uh, rule. So let's see here. So 10% times 3,100 would equal, right? If I just take away that last zero, that's gonna be 310 right, 310 kcals represents 10% of the total kcals consumed. So now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do multiples of 310 to get as close as I can to 630. So let's do this. If I do, let's see, 310 times two. So if I do this, this is gonna represent 20%. 310 times two, that equals 620. And oddly enough, again, that's a pretty good shot, right? This 620 is pretty darn close to 630, right? That's pretty close. So when I'm going to be end up looking for my answer choices, I'm going to look for an answer choice that is really close to 20%. Now, keep in mind though, right? This 620 represents 20%, but we're looking for 630. So your answer choice in reality, because we're not dealing with a calculator here, Maybe your correct interest choice would be 21%, maybe 22%, right? Because this is a hair lower than 630, right? We're dealing with 620. It's 10 kcals less, which could represent a 1% difference in this point. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't. But so in your mind, though, just keep that in the back of your head. Ideally, whatever your interest choice is going to be, though, it's going to be pretty darn close to that 20%, right? And you should be able to pick the best answer choice based, of what, based off of uh, what we just did here, okay? So... This in essence is really how I do some quick division whenever I have any math related problems on the NSCA CSS exam that requires division, right? And I don't know how to divide on paper. You probably don't know how to divide on paper and that's totally okay because I know how to multiply and add and that's what we're sticking to here, right? This is what we're doing here. We're doing simple addition and multiplication to make your lives easier, spend less time on these questions, and also to just be able to do this math a little bit quicker in our own heads too, when it comes to the real world, if we have to do math on the fly and we don't have the ability to whip out our phone or a calculator or whatever it may be, right? So, and math is never a bad skill to have, right? Being able to do this is never a bad skill to have. 
But anyways, guys, I hope you uh, found this useful. Again, please expect more of these videos where I kind of show you quick tidbits on how to solve different types of math related problems and how to do math on your own without using a calculator. All right. And if you do need more help, please head to thestrengthcoachtutor.com for any of your NSCA CSCS exam preparation needs, whether it's tutoring or more uh, practice quizzes and exams, videos, lectures, whatever it may be, we have it all for you guys. All right. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you back here soon.